What's up guys, Asa awesome, Mimate Analysis here, finally fixed my problem with my microphone that I had. I'm going to quickly make a video here, I've been very busy this week. Um, kind of lost a little bit of motivation to make videos, I think I broke myself out with all that content I was putting out earlier. But um, I'm going to go over the picks man, and then we're going to get the breakdown. I don't normally do this, but it's just going to be a quick video anyway. So my picks are Chad and Haliga, Diana Balbita, Chaz Scully, Jessica Rose Clark, not a lot of confidence, David Onama, Mario Batista. Jonathan Pierce, Abdul Razak Al Hassan, Jim Miller, not a lot of confidence though, Parker Porter, Kyle Del Kels, and Jamal Hill. Now, picks always subject to change. As of last week, um, I had William Knight on my YouTube video, but I changed that pick on my Instagram, which is where I post my finalized picks, to um, his opponent who ended up winning, Maxime Grishin. So, Chad Anhaliga versus Jesse Strader. Jesse Strader is a pure boxer, he's the boxing coach of some famous guy. He also manages some famous guy, I forgot his name, but he's been on No Jumper a few times. Um, Chad Inhaliga, on the other hand, 9-0 in his nine, last 9 fights. At one point, he was 2-5. and five. Coming off that split decision win over Moeen Gafarov, which could have gone either way, man. That was a very, very close fight. But he did knock down Moeen in the first round, I believe, which was a pretty good look. A lot of people don't know this, but he is a brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as well. TC Strader, a pure boxer. He's got no ground game whatsoever. I think he's going to get submitted. But Chad and Haliga in this one here. I'm going Chad and Haliga by submission. I know a lot of people picking KO because Strait is not really UFC level. It hasn't proven himself to be. And he got knocked out very quickly by Montel Quick Jackson, who knocked him out, knocked him down probably like five times. Chad and Haliga submission, guys. Um, I, I do think he's actually going to lock one up. Diana Balbita versus Gloria De Paula. A closer fight than what the records suggest, but I do. Um, I am going with Diana Balbita. She got that decision win over Hannah Goldie. She actually does have pretty good stand-up herself as well. Two-fight losing streak to Luana Jajua and Molly McCann. I mean, the Molly McCann loss doesn't really look too bad prior to that, though. She was kind of fighting cans on the regional scene. But the win over Hannah Goldie, I guess, doesn't look too bad. Gloria De Paula, on the other hand, 5-4. and four. I think she's just been rushed into the UFC too early. She's only 26 years old. On a two-fight losing streak to Shan Velismus, where she got knocked out in the first minute. And Jin Yu Frey, where she uh, lost a decision there. Prior to that, though, she did beat a 4-0 and o girl and a 3-0 and o girl. But, um, yeah, I just think Diana Balbita is going to win a decision. I think the fight is going to take place on the feet. I do actually think that we're going to see a pretty exciting fight. I think this fight is going to probably be um, relatively underrated going into it. But I do think that we, we should see at least some sort of exciting stand-up uh, in this fight anyway. I'm, I am going to go Balbita by decision. Um, odds are very close, though. Odds are very close. Chaz Scully versus Mark Striegel. Mark Striegel has not fought the competition that Chaz Scully has. Chaz Scully hasn't fought in over two years. Mark Striegel hasn't fought in about a year and a half, or well, year and a quarter or so. And he hasn't actually won a fight in, uh, in about three years. So, um, yeah, pretty much both guys coming back off a long layoff, I guess you could say. Uh, the best guys that Mark Striegel has fought are not the best guys that Chaz Scully has fought, man. He's got a win over Chris Gruger's market, which doesn't actually age too badly. A um, no contest to Bobby Moffat and a win over Jordan Griffin, which has kind of aged relatively well as well. I think Chaz Skelly's going to beat him, man. I do think he's going to lock up a submission over Mark Striegel on this one. I've got Chaz, Chaz Skelly by submission in this fight here. Jessica Rose Clark versus Stephanie Eager. I think Stephanie Eager is like a Swedish or, or a Swiss, sorry, uh, judo or judoka black belt, long time black belt. I think a judo world champion. I think she's actually got a win in judo over Ronda Rousey as well. Uh, I think they're one and one in that or something like that, which would be uh, very interesting if she managed to call out Ronda Rousey if she won the fight. I don't think she will, though. I'm going with Jessie Jess to win the fight here. She is from Australia, even though she does train out of USA. Um, her last her last two losses to Jessica I, Penny Kanzad, aren't really too bad, to be honest. One over Sierra Alka, a very a fight that was too close against Jocelyn, Jocelyn Edwards. I th you would expect someone like Jessica Clark to be beating Jocelyn Edwards relatively convincingly. Um, but she used a wrestler and it wasn't a very exciting fight. Stephanie Eager, I think, submitted. Shanna Young, um, KO, so ground and powder, oh, sorry. Lost to Tracy Cortez. Don't really have anything to say about this fight, except I do think Jessica Rose Clark is going to win it. That That's it, uh, by decision. <laughs> sorry, I don't really know much about that one. David Onama versus Gabriel Benitez. I've seen people talking up David Onama like he is the next big thing. He actually, um, I think the MMA guru really likes the David David Onama. I think a, a few of the Fight Night Picks guys, shout out to them, also like David Onama a lot. I like David Onama as well. 
I am picking him to win the fight because it is at 145. He took the fight at Mason Jones at 155 on short notice, and he looks pretty good, man. That fight was relatively close. I think if he, he had a full camp, he probably could have beaten Mason Jones, to be, like, let, let's be honest. That was a short notice part. Prior to that, he's been beating pretty good guys, 5-1, 16-11, and 8-4, and 2-0, and kind of the kind of guys that you'll be fighting um, as you're building up your record, as you're building up your career. He fights out of glory, MMA, and fitness. On the other hand, Gabriel Benitez fights out of AKA. Very experienced veteran here. The guys that he's lost to, though, Billy Quarantillo, who we know is actually pretty good. He beat Justin James. He lost to Omar Morales when he was undefeated. Sadiq Yusuf is pretty exciting and has a fight with Alex Caceres coming up. And Humberto Bandanez, who he's got to win against. David Onama, though, he's got that stand-up. I do think he's going to use his heavy hands, and I do think he's going to knock out Benitez in this one, but... Benitez is a live underdog, man. He's got that experience, and the guys that he lose to are the borderline top 15 guys. Mario Batista versus Jay Perrin. This fight was announced about three uh, three hours ago, so... Uh, very, very short notice, about four days notice for Jay Perrin um, taking the fight against a guy like Mario Batista, who has been in there with some of the best fighters, man. Corey Sanhagen and Jin, Yu, Jin Su Sun, who had a fight of the night with Piotr Jan, a loss. And uh, Trevin Jones as well. We all know how good Trevin Jones can be on his best day. But uh, prior to that, he took the O from Miles Johns, beat Jin Yu Son. And uh, before that, he's beating pretty good guys on the regional scene. I was picking him to beat Khalid Taha. I don't think a short notice Jay Perrin is the same level as a Khalid Taha. He did have a very, sh um, very close fight with Dwight Joseph who uh, didn't get in the UFC off that win. But after that, he was fighting guys at CES and Cage Titans. But um, yeah, I just think that Mario Bautista, man, this is a short notice fight. I think he's going to get the job done. I think he's going to beat him. Oh. Does, does he get a finish in this one? I don't know. I'm just going to go with decision for Mario Bautista, but I could definitely see a, ver a, 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 a finish of some sort. Jonathan Pierce versus Christian Rodriguez. Another short notice fight. Christian Rodriguez being put in there against Jonathan Pierce. I think this is short notice, or maybe it's not. But anyway, the point is... I think it is actually short notice. It is. Sorry. Um, yeah, this is not good for Christian Rodriguez, in my opinion. He's got a relatively fishy record, man. 19-36 and 36 is who he just uh, fought after a winning fight on um, the Contender Series. Uh, I was pretty high on Christian Rodriguez. I do think he actually picked him to beat Junior Cortez as well. I just don't think he's going to be the guy to beat JSP, man. Jonathan Pierce coming to the UFC. I think he was like 8-3. and 9-3 or something. He lost to Joe Lozon on a very bad debut. Let's be honest, he got beaten in about a minute and a half. But he came back. He uh, he ground and pounded Kai Kamaka the third. And then he submitted Omar Morales on the uh, pay per view, the early prelims of the pay per view. He's six foot in the uh, featherweight division. O uh, Christian Rodriguez is five foot seven. Fought at a catch weight of one fifty. I don't know, man. I just don't. I just don't really like the record of Christian Rodriguez. I know it's seven and zero, I know it's pretty good, but I just don't think he's going to be the level of Jonathan Pierce. And I think Jonathan Pierce is probably just going to do what he wants with him, and I do think he's going to get the job done. Inside the distance, submission or KO, either one. I don't think the fight's going to go the distance. Uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan versus Joaquin Buckley. This fight could be the co-main event. It probably should be the co-main event, even though um, both guys don't have the greatest records. But Joaquin Buckley, he's got the name from the from his KO of the year a couple of years ago. Abdul Razak Al Hassan just knocked out Alessio De Kiriko. He's the underdog. Joaquin Buckley, I think he's a slow starter. I think he starts too slowly for a guy like Abdul Razak Al Hassan. I think Abdul is going to knock him out in the first round. All 11 of his wins are by knockout in the first round. Um, that's pretty insane. And um, I think he's going to get the job done. Joaquin Buckley has shown a lack of chin in the past. He did get hurt a little bit by Antonio Aloiho, which shouldn't really be happening. I've got Abdul Razak Al Hassan to knock him out. Uh, either way, we're going to get a knockout. I do think Razak Al Hassan is going to get the job done. Jim Miller versus Nicholas Moda. A fight I actually don't know who's going to win, for sure. Uh, there's not a lot of confidence in this pick. At all. Do I think Nicholas Moda could be the guy to knock out Jim Miller? Potentially, but we're talking about a veteran. And we're talking about a guy... Oh, dude. Oh, maybe I do pick Nicholas Moda. I don't know. I really don't know. I want to pick Miller Saab, but I don't know if he's going to get the job, to, uh, the, the fight to the ground. I think if Nicholas Moda wins, he's going to knock him out in the first round. He's on a bit of a streak, a three-fight winning streak. He's pretty good guys. Went to decision with Joseph Lowry, but he does have very heavy hands. Fight at Factory X Muay Thai. Jim Miller, on the other hand, 38 UFC fights. He did get knocked out by Dan Hooker, but that's Dan Hooker, my favorite fighter. Um... 
Man, who do we go with? I'm just gonna go. I'm actually gonna go with Modder. I'm gonna go Nicholas Modder. I'm gonna go Modder by KO. I wanted to pick Joe Miller as the underdog, but I think I'm just gonna have to go Modder by KO. Parker Porter. I think Parker Porter is gonna beat Alan Badeau. Um, I mean the guys that he's lost to is Chris Dalkaus and I think Tom Aspinall. I think he lost to Tom Aspinall. Uh, Tom Aspinall as well. We're both top fifteen. Beat Josh Parisian. Okay, I lied. Um, he just lost to Chris Dalkaus. He beat Josh Parisian. Beat Chase Sherman. I don't think Alan Badeau is that guy to beat Parker Porter. I, I think he got popped against Nasimeto, I think. He, uh, yeah, he lost to Espinal. And lost to Dolce Lungwin Baller as well. Um, not really much to say here. I do think Parker Porter, he's just a little bit better all around. I think he's going to get the job done inside the distance. KO or submission on that one there. Kyle Dalkhouse versus Jamie Pickett. You guys know that I don't really rate Jamie Pickett that highly, but he did beat a guy that I was very high on in Joseph Holmes. I had a lot of confidence in Joseph Holmes coming into the Jamie Pickett fight, and Joseph Holmes really disappointed me, man. Jamie Pickett, um, as his last name says, he likes to work up against the fence. He likes to work up against the cage, uses his clinch. I do think that Kyle Dalkus is going to be that guy. He was looking good against Kyle uh, Kevin Holland before the accidental head, but yeah, I do think that that rematch should hopefully happen sometime down the line. They're both young guys, so it probably will happen. Um, the guys that he's lost to, they're Phil Hawes and Brendan Allen, two pretty great guys. Uh, beat Justin Stoltzfus, who's a submission guy. Beat Nolan Norwood. Cole Dalkas, I believe, has a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu like his brother Chris. I think he's going to utilize that against Jamie Pickett. I think we're going to see a submission for Dalkas in this one here. But with that being said, I do think that... Um, yeah, I, th I think this is a great fight. I didn't actually realize it was at 195 as well, which uh, will probably benefit, because it's short notice as well. I think that will probably benefit Dalkaus, actually, because he's a little bit bigger. But um, moving on, we've got Jamal Hill versus Johnny Walker. I think Jamal Hill's going to chin Johnny Walker in one of the first two rounds. Johnny Walker was getting hit by Tiago Santos. Yes, he was taking the punches, man. But I think Jamal Hill is just a younger guy, and he's just ready to swing. <laughs> I think Jamal Hill is going to swing at Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker has become a lot more patient. I think that has actually gone to his detriment. He's 2-3 uh, and three in his last five. He's the guy that people were talking about fighting John Jones. There was a lot of hype around him at one point. But I think moving into SBG Ireland, they've made him a patient Johnny Walker. And yes, he may not be getting knocked out as much. But... um. At the same time, man, it just hasn't 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 helped him that much. I think Jamal Hill's gonna chin him. I think he's gonna use his boxing. He knocked out. Um, I think I actually picked Jamie Crew to win that fight. He knocked him out in the first round, even though he lost to Paul Craig. But he's still a prospect to, to look out for. And uh, yeah, this is this isn't the best main event. We're obviously meant to have Fiziev and Dos Anjos, but uh, we're, it is what it is, man. Johnny Walker's still a big name. Jamal Hill, an up and coming guy. I think this fight does make sense to be moved to the main event. I mean, what else were you gonna do? Jim Miller versus Nicholas Motta, maybe. Um, that would literally be your only option. Or uh, maybe even uh, Cole Dalkus, Jamie Pickett. But yeah, Johnny Walker, Jamal Hill, definitely the best main event to be made on this card. I'm going Jamal Hill. I think he's going to get the job done. I think he's going to get the job done in the first two rounds, and he's going to get the job done by knockout. And uh, thanks for the watch, guys. Sorry, yeah, um, it's a very low-quality video, but it's just all I've got time for at the moment. So hopefully you guys have a great day, and I'll see you later.